shame in swimming. In fact, some people say, if you're not swimming, you're not trying hard enough. So in this chapter, we're going to look at safe swimming. We're going to give you what you need to know so that you're not a victim, you're just a paddler having an out-of-boat experience. And you'll be safe in the knowledge that the best person to get you to the bank is you. Swimming is the cornerstone of whitewater self-rescue. So in the first part of this chapter, we're going to look at all the safe swimming options you have for different situations in the river. Then, in the second part, we'll cover your self-rescue options for securing your equipment before things get out of hand. Defensive swimming. When you're swimming defensively, you want to keep your body nice and flat on the surface with your toes and feet high to avoid entrapment. Position yourself facing downstream to see where you're going and backstroke to control your position. Doing this, you can ferry glide towards an eddy. Make sure you keep swimming until you're safely all the way into the eddy and settled before you try to stand up. So in summary, keep your feet on the surface to avoid entrapment, maintain a position facing downstream, use backstroking to control your position in the river. Aggressive swimming. Defensive swimming is good for saving energy, but sometimes you need to use a more aggressive approach. This is usually a front crawl and allows us to gain a more favorable position in the water, like attaining an eddy. The important points to remember are, roll over, keeping your feet on the surface to avoid entrapment. Use the front crawl to attain a better position in the river. Using short bursts where needed to avoid tiring. Swimming across eddy lines. When eddy lines become powerful, they can become more difficult to cross. For stronger eddy lines, we can use the barrel roll. We reach over the eddy line and continue to roll our body with alternating front strokes and back strokes. So that's reaching across the eddy line, followed by using alternating front strokes and back strokes. So this is using a blend of the different swimming approaches that we've discussed. Defensive swimming just now keeping his feet high, keeping himself safe. Move into a bit of a barrel roll and some aggressive swimming to get across the fast moving and set himself up for the final approach into the eddy. Back into defensive swimming again. Again, feet high, ferry glide in and across the line. Forward, swim until you're clear footing and stand up. Swimming with a paddle. Paddles, with their large blade surfaces, can be used to aid swimming. We can use the paddle in a defensive swim with our feet out in front of us on the surface to control where we are in a river. We can also use the paddle aggressively to make sure we get where we want to go. Swimming strainers. In the first example, the swimmer approaches the simulated strainer in a defensive position and once on the strainer, even in this easy flowing water, a strong swimmer cannot pull themselves up and over against the flow. Going under and through is a dangerous option because you never know what lies underneath. Your best option is to avoid strainers in the water at all costs. If a strainer is unavoidable, Adopt an aggressive position and actively swim faster than the flow. Then try to lift your body up and over the strainer. Do everything you can to avoid strainers. But if you have no option, swim aggressively at the strainer, 
Do it early because you only have one chance. Lift yourself up and over. Fending off. When we are swimming and are faced with a solid object in the flow, like this boulder, stay in a defensive swim position and use your feet to push off. Now that we've had a good look at safe swimming options, let's have a look at how we can use that to help us self-rescue our equipment at the earliest opportunity. Pushing a boat. If you're close enough to the side and the conditions allow it, the simplest self-rescue is to right the boat, then get to one of the ends and give it a big push towards the bank, then swim after it. This method is as valid for a kayak as it is for a canoe. Because canoes are larger, we have a couple of different options for self-rescue. If a canoe has had a throw bag attached as a swim line, then a swimmer need only locate the end of the line and if necessary, open the neck of the bag before aggressively swimming to the shore with the line in hand. Once stable, either just in or at the edge of the water, the swimmer can pendulum the boat into security. If there are two paddlers in a canoe, then one can grab the swim line and start swimming for the side, while the other pushes the canoe towards the bank. This combines your efforts and reduces the time it takes to secure the boat. If your boat has enough flotation, and if the conditions allow it, and you're capable, a very effective option might be to simply right your boat, then clamber in, making sure your head and shoulders come out to the far side for balance. Once stable, you can paddle the swamp boat to the shore as best you can. This may not be stylish, but it could save you from a lengthy swim. Practicing safe swimming is a lot of fun. Being a competent swimmer in the river helps us to be more confident in the whitewater environment. This means that we are more likely to be proactive when others are trying to help us. 